In this video, we're going to look at two macros for Confluence, the page properties and the page properties report. So let's dive right into Confluence and see what those looks like. So in Confluence, if we create a new page, and uh, let's call this page properties, and then we have the two macros. So the first macro that you use, you use on the pages themselves. That is the one that is called page properties. So we can just do the forward slash and we can do properties. And this one is the one that we want. And the page properties report is what we're going to use later on. So let's start with the page properties. So when you create the page properties, it will be empty. It will just be a little uh, macro window uh, or a little box uh, that you can put other things into. On the right side, you will get two options. You can set an ID for it, so you can actually have uh, them referenced in different ways. So if you have multiple page properties, you can reference which one you want to present later on. You can also choose if when you are viewing the page, if this is going to show uh, or if it's going to be hidden. So it will only be visible when you edit the page. So for this one, we're just not going to add a page properties ID and we're going to leave it so we can see it. So to actually add content to the page properties, we're going to use the table element. So we want to have a base pair. So we want to have a title and the actual data. So by standard, you get three columns. So we're going to click on this one and we're going to remove the last column. And then we're going to, uh, I usually do this for cosmetic reason. You don't have to do this, but I remove the header row and then I set a header column instead. And whatever we place now in this column will be the headlines and that we will show later on. So for this one, I'm going to do status. I'm going to do a report or responsible, let's call it that. And we can have date. Yeah, so we uh, know. So the status for the page uh, will show what the status is, how far we have come. So we just do the status. And we can put this one in yellow and say in progress. Responsible for this one, we can use the name macro. So we just use add and I just use my name. And for date, we do the same with the date object. And then we can say this one needs to be done by the 31st, let's say. Now, this is all we actually need uh, to place a page property on this page. And we can fill this one out with any data that we want. So we can continue adding more rows if we want that. But for now, just for the purpose of this one, let's just publish this one. And now you see we have a nice little table here. And if I go in and edit this again, and I can click up here on the page properties and the pen. There we go. And now I can play, make this hidden so you can see what that one looks like. And click Publish. And now you see it's still there, but we cannot actually see it. It's, it's hidden for us. And you also have different versions on how you want to present this. So you can have it uh, wide, you can have it centered, and you can have full width. So these are the options that you can have to how you want to display this. Let's just use this one for center for now and go to publish. Now to display these, uh, oh sorry, I should have not, I shouldn't have kept them hidden. So let's just show them again. There we go. There we go. And to display these, let's copy this one and make a new, another one. So we can see that it works for two and we will call these page properties too. And we will make this one green and say that it is uh, published. Let's see. And let's do another date. Let's say let's set this one for the 19th. There we go. Now we have two items here, two pages, page properties and page properties two. And what we want to do now is we want to create a new page for all the page properties. 
and I'm actually going to rename this one so we can do that properly. So we just call this one page properties one. There we go. Now we can create a new page that is called page properties and we place these below that one in the tree. And what I want to do on this page is I want to list all the items and that are all the pages that I have previously created. And how I do that is I use the page properties report. Now, as you can see, uh, it will automatically create a report, a list of items with the different titles or the different labels that we placed in our page properties uh, table. So we have title, we have date, we have responsible and status. So as you remember, we put status, responsible and date. Those were the three uh, rows that we created in our table. And the title is, of course, the title of the pages themselves. Now we can control these and we can uh, actually say that this one should only show us things of a certain label. So let's just page properties. If we add that label, now it will not show anything because we haven't added any labels to our pages. We can also select if we want to have this from one space or if we want to have it from multiple spaces. And we can also add a bunch of filters. We can say, for example, that this one is with the, an ancestor, a previous uh, higher up. Um, and yeah. We can also add multiple numbers of filters to this. So we can have it on who, whoever created it, uh, who has been a contributor. Uh, we can have it if it includes a certain text, if it is of a certain type, for example. So if we take a type, then we can select if it is a page, a comment, blog, and so on. So we can actually filter out this one even more. But for now, let's just add this one with a label. And we can also add a, a bunch of options to this. So the options that we can do is we can as we can target specific properties IDs. So if we have multiple IDs on a page, then we can actually target specific portions of that page, specific um, page properties. And uh, we can actually place a column heading. So let's just do that. Yeah, so we see where it ends up. And we can also control what columns we want to show. So in the example that we have, we had status, we had uh, responsible, and we had date. So if we want, we can filter out and just show status and uh, reporter, for example, or the responsible one. Uh, and we do that just by stating here our status, and then a comma, and then we have uh, responsible. That way we can target. So if we have data sets in our page, page properties that are quite large and we just want to show certain things then we can filter this out we're not going to do that for this one uh, but just so you know that you can do that and you also have the number of items so you can select this one uh, by any number so if you just want to show top five or if you want to show five thousand you can select that here and you can also sort by different columns to different titles that you place in your page properties and by default, it will do last modified dates. So if we want, we can have this uh, sorted by title. And that way you will have uh, the title that you can see here will actually be what we are sorting on. And you can reverse that as well. So if you want to have title, but you want it the opposite way, then you can just click there. You can also select if you want to show how many comments, likes, uh, and you can also select if you want to show the number of labels and create a last modified type and so on. So I'm just going to save this one for now and we come back and we're going to change some of these things here so you can see how it appears. But right now we don't have anything because we haven't placed any labels yet. So I'm going to save this one. I'm going to publish this one and then it will be blank. So let me just fix the tree first. There we go, now we have a nice tree. So for each of these now, I want to add that label. So we're gonna add the page properties. And the same thing with the next one. 
There we go. Now, right away, nothing will actually happen because this is cached. So you might need to refresh the page uh, for them to show up. There you go. And now you see we have uh, both of them that we have now connected with our uh, label. Now if I go in here and we can actually see what this one looks like when we do a few of the changes. So in the options we can now add, let's add comments, likes, labels, creator, and lost, modify time. And we save that one. Now you see these will be spit out uh, and we, when we publish this you will see that we have modified, we will have labels and creator. And if we add a comment to one of the pages, so let's just add comment. And we go back to the page properties. Uh, and you see it will appear at the end of the row here. So that's it for how we can create uh, page properties. So that's it for how we can use page properties. And if you like this content, I'm going to produce more of these uh, short videos to show you certain macros. So subscribe if that is interesting for you. And until next time, be safe out there.